Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, the ADZ series, in which we're playing as the Enclave, finally, which at the time of recording I've missed um, the Enclave for some reason, but whatever. We're in the Lair of the Bear. We're in the very borders of the NCR, a rogue nation occupying American soil. We cannot deny that they would destroy us if we they became fully aware of our existence. Luckily for us, the bear is blind, weakened by bureaucracy, and fighting an ineffectual leader. With the right efforts made, we can hide under the very nose of the NCR until we're strong enough to reveal our plans, but we cannot keep them in the shadows forever. It will become harder and harder to conceal ourselves as time goes on. Our time will come soon, which God's political power to do that. I'm going to wait to do that. So we are using Old World Blues, Old World Blues Radio, um, and Old World Blues, or just I guess it's called Enclave Reborn Redux, which I know this was basically Enclave Reborn mod, but is being, is being updated due to the developer, who's doing very well, but we remember Navarro. Many thought the fall of Navarro was the end of the Enclave, the end of the American dream, but as with the Great War, the world would discover it was not so easy to defeat America, not by a long shot. When the rig was destroyed, the last hope of America laid in Navarro, and the Brotherhood and NCR saw to it that the American dream was to be snuffed out. With many standing on the edge of despair, the toughest soldier of the Enclave, Sergeant Major Dornan, rallied what few troops he could muster and fought away out with power armor. Ooh. Three divisions of veterans. Escape using vertebrates. Ooh, I like gunships. Escape before the fighting got bad. Um, I want the manpower. Honestly, I might use gunships just because I do want to pair drop eventually into a lot of different places, so. Escape using vertebrates. All soldiers never die. Much like the Enclave, Dornan tried to hide and integrate after the fall of Navarro. He took to a disguise in Vault City, becoming infamous amongst those who would threaten the peace and quiet of Vault City. That was until one day, the NCR Rangers arrived. And the sons and daughters of liberty. The veterans of Enclave are old, so aging, yet there is a new generation of Enclave who are ready to take up the flag and defend America. As they should. They only have a thousand manpower. Oh, not good enough. For years, Dornan, under the name Chad Ranor, hid among the Vault City security. Many of them, his old units, settled there as well, growing the population considerably. For a time, it was peaceful, though by no means idyllic. Word out of the NCR saw Rangers and military police rounding up former Enclave citizens who also tried to integrate. During one caravan security run to Saxony, during watch of the mother and father were hanged for their association with the Enclave. And the children were spared. It took every ounce of discipline to not open fire right there, then, then and there. Well, see, Bureaucracy kept the NCR at bay. But that was only for so long. Then one night, there was a knock at the old sergeant's door, and he was greeted by the steely eyes of the NCR Rangers. They come looking for him and spoke to him by name. There was an intense fight, but by the end of it, the two dead NCR Rangers and Dorna knew his time was up. Never send morons. Uh, they came for him, and they'll come for the rest. Also, I'd always say that, um, let me know what I did last time. At this point, I don't remember what I did last time. It's been a long time since I've played as the Enclave, so. So, where did I put my power armor? Advanced power armor is added to the national stockpile. Ooh, 50 more political power would be nice. Ooh, but an APA is so good. We have no spare, nothing to spare. I mean, we can, tr we're trying to make some. We might get one a month. Uh, one a month is god-awful. But we could use that political power really badly. Uh, intellectual support, stability. Yeah, Joshua. Ah, uh, I, no, I didn't go to go with that one. Corrupt sycophant. I'm mean, a consumer goods. It doesn't even matter too much right now. I want that political power though. 15%. Because political power is just super good to have. Resistance target goes down. Old purist. I love it. Resistance decay and growth speed? Oh my god. Oh, the 50%. How much do we get right now? Oh, that's not enough. That's really just not enough. Let's see what we're going to do anyways. The camp room will come for the rest. At the height of the Enclave's power, <laughs> Dorn had the distinct privilege of leading his own unit. Something unheard of. Uh, of being, since he was a non-commissioned officer, however, Dorn's rangers are ranked aside the Devil's Brigade and granted company in terms of effectiveness. When Navarro fell, they of course rallied behind the most feared and respected man of the Enclave, yet this time wore on. The dream of America flickered out, they moved on, though many settled in Vault City. When Dornan arrived at the house of his second in command, fists bloody from the encounter, they all knew they were no longer safe. The two went door to door, knowing the hour was co coming. That night saw an exodus, Dornan doing his last act as Chad Renard to get them through. They made their way to an abandoned pre-war base off near New Reno. It was long abandoned, there a few actually knew of the exact location, but Dornan did. And as the family settled into the pre-war bases, only one thing was on their minds. They were ready for revenge. Ooh, force for instability. They wanted a future for their children. I'm going to keep going with the political power for now. Is that a good thing to do? Probably not, but that's okay. Respect by scientist purists. Hmm. I'm still in the lair of the bear. 
Oh, I do want to get more stability as well. Hold the military theory committee. Uh, sure, why not? You get lose research, but you get more weekly war support. Lose weekly stability. I want stability. Unless there's something else good we can get here too. Kyle McLaws, interesting. Ace pilot pilot. Fighter pilot. Air mission, air support mission efficiency, land doctrine, air XP gain. Jace Green would probably be the best one right there. But I want more stability first. A new generation of Americans. The time, however, had marched on. Dorna's cropped black hair turned solved for white, and even his best officers grew weary with age. Yet, among the numbers were not a series of old enclave, but a new generation, sired by the enclave of old. Many were taught the basics of survival as others taught how to be soldiers. Many of the older ones here tonight were rangers, and they had taught their children well. They come of age being taught of the enclave of America, of the heritage. Dorna thought back to the child hanging beside his parents, then looked to the family's huddled around the center of the depot. Even if a few said the enclave was dead or the American dream was gone, they weren't going to give up, not this time. But no, they were the enclave's futures. They are America's future. Oh boy. Yeah, Anderson. Intellectuals. I think we got to go. As much as I want revenge, uh, I think we want to go intellectuals. Um, I think we could do the purists of American reformers and Nevada reformers. Mm. Probably go with intellectuals for now. Calling all enclave. We can use old radio broadcast equipment around the depot to send out a signal, alerting other enclave survivors to our presence. Never let the old flag fall. Like the Continental Army at Valley Forge. We will not give up, we will not vanish into the wild, we will never or into the wind, and we'll never let America fall. We'll come back, we'll win, and America will never fall. Sergeant Ma Arch Sergeant Major Arch Dornan, twenty two seventy five. The Sierra Enclave. Using old codes and working endlessly to get the radio running, the refugees r uh, from Vault City began broadcasting from afar. The encrypted channel would be hidden among from prying ears of the NCR, secure from those who knew how, like the Brotherhood. Soon, others began arriving, some from the north, the east, and even a few out from California. I'm with them. A series of vertebrates arrived, having come from the Bloom Bloomfield Space Center in California. Among them was Franklin Anderson, a well-respected scientist in his time and a brilliant orator who managed to rally many within the depot to the old Pierce cause. While this chafed under the words, no one could argue it played to the Enclave's desire for revenge. Not long after, a separate group arrived from Oregon, a famous mercenary war band known as the Granite Company, who historically was one of the greatest units in the Enclave. While Granite Sr. passed away not long ago, his son, Douglas Granite, had taken over in where Anderson made fiery retorts of vengeance for the purity of America. Granite made impassioned speeches to counter talking about reform and of a new beginning. Night after night, this continued, and soon came to a head when it was suggested that the depot hold a vote. A scientist, politician, and mercenary war hero, interesting. Things really got busy around here. Vampire, I mean, I, I could use a political power more readily right now. I said to hide activities. Ooh, do we even have bottle caps? That used to be a problem that we, caps would, we would not, not never have any caps. Oh boy. Cybernetics, we're not using Old World Blues uh, Tech Expanded just because we don't need it. Um, also, we have pretty much, not a lot of things advanced actually. It's kind of suck, but whatever. Never let the old flag fall, of course. Uh, well, 48 days. Yeah, okay. Despite all that happened in the last few months, the Enclave remnants are scattered far across the American continent. From MacArthur to Chicago to possibly even Texas and beyond, Dornan came to Sierra D uh, Depot for a reason to get a stable base far from the prying eyes and prepare for the future. Now, that what he has, the Anderson and Granite Company have, they can accomplish just that. It'll be hard and difficult, but that never stopped America before, of course. America will rise, America will go on. Uh, the rig may have gone down and Family sounded like rats in sewers, but the way some should learn, it's not so easy to take out America like that. Not by a long shot. Let's spread the word. Uncle survivors from past expeditions afar arrive to join. Ooh, I want the political power, though. Oh, we get political power no matter what. Lauren Coyote Kelly. Uh, how many gunships do we have? 100? I want to see what this person is like. It might be good, it might not be good. So, who do we have here? Navarro Garrison's Navarro Expeditions. 20 combo with us. Honestly, kind of decent. It's interesting. And we'll throw you on. Uh, who is this? Lauren Coyote Kelly. Coyote Kelly. Strong, agile, lucky. There, we can get that up then. Better call Saul. Sal. Uh, our choice. Uncle Ivolt's elections remove complete chaos. Enables editing of all the templates of this country and training or disbanding units belonging to them. 
Oh, it's the ability first. Never forget her past. Add technology matters to heritage. Boost your power armor cap. Oh, that'd be good. Good working conditions. Oh, I want to max out that stability. And But we also got to start working on getting more intellectuals here, too. So, as much as I want army XP. There's war support for that. Sergeant Dornan. He's another current country leader. Daily elites. Oh, that'd be pretty easy to do, but still. Inspected by scientists, elites. Yeah. Technocrat, not great. Um, is there anything else around here? Re Reorganize the remnants. Another undesirable recruitments. Enclave members only. Ah, Enclave officers are serving us for elite support. And support no world veterans, yeah. No formal training. Oh god. Plus point two is quite a bit. You can't change out of that one. So we gotta go with you. <clears throat> Better call Sal. Many arenas run by crime lords, however. Dorner members reports of working with one family to acquire accounts for research on the rig. They can still be used to us if only for a while. Our choice. Sergeant Dorner was well respected by both the reformer and purest factions within the Enclave. The Enclave needed a president, however. And the Sarge expressed disinterest in being called a sir for the rest of his career. He works for a living, Garnet. Encounter the Crimson Caravan. One of our patrols stumbled upon expeditions of the Crimson Caravan, the squad leader, less trigger happy than some, has reported back requesting orders on how to proceed. The caravan is not close enough to confirm that they are faced with Enclave power armor specifically, but rumors of suspicious patrols in the Nevada Desert can reach the NCR nonetheless. No witnesses. Try no witnesses. Nice, over one political power day is great. For the rig's destruction, we contracted with one of the new Reno f crime families, uh, Salvatore's, trading drugs for weapons. While it was a time honored tradition, the family had been kicked out of New Reno due to their plot being uncovered. Even plasma rifles can't stop a mob of angry thugs and mob enforcers. They've been living on the New Reno outskirts while the Salvatore's themselves have been heading north to outrun Mr. Bishop. Many of those once employed are now desperate for production, and we can use that to our advantage. Bolstering your numbers and diverting the more scientifically minded ones to work on lesser projects, freeing up a rest for more important research. Bring them in. And muzzle the dudes. Who get a research slot? Oh my god. Distribute them among the teams and keep them under guard. This sounds like this could be very bad for us in the future. But I, I gotta go with that. Our president. We've made a choice, and the choice will change the future for Enclave, and we are successful. America. But who really is the man to be elected? So military Heritage. It unlocks access to the Military Heritage technology is located on the top right of the infantry technology window. Oh. That's cool. Past victories. Urban Patrol Armor. Forcers, of course. Oh, let's grab that one for a second. Sure, why not? That sounds good to us. Grab the officials and prove working can the factories. Our choice. Start working on that. Our president. Sergeant Jordan is well respected by both the reformer and purist factions within the enclaves. Nonetheless, uh, neither of them seem as a viable president and have presented their own candidates, of course. The Pierce have selected Franklin Anderson as a candidate, while the reformers are led by Douglas Granite. The Pierce Pierce faction has advantage, but the support of the Sarge could sell out the scales in favor of the reformers. I apologize if we didn't choose the one you wanted. I can't, choose, I can't please everybody, unfortunately. Purity? It's purity, but reform. We were a builder once great nation. Most reformers still have their principles. Sadly, many of the reformist elements have already deserted in the last few years, leaving mostly the devoted and fanatical. We'll have to tread carefully in our efforts to reform the enclave into an organization fit to restore order, justice, and democracy to the United States of America, of course. So, who sins the father? Grant's past is a controversial subject in mind, or in our midst, and made all the more contentious by the rumors spread by purists. The cause of Grant's father and his relationship with the Chosen One, the purists uh, accuse Grant's father of treason. Of, uh, for aiding the chosen one destroying the oil rig, but lack any evidence, of course. Despite the fact that it would deny these allegations, says nothing about political slander. Douglas remembers clearly what his father told him about that fateful day in the oil rig. He aided the chosen one, then went his separate ways. Speaking of the chosen one, let me tell you who your mother was. He didn't aid the chosen one. Um, we can leave this option open for now. 
That was youth. After traveling around with his son for a brief few years, Grant senior established contact with one of the Enclave's civilian vaults, set up as a contingency to repopulate the American mainland after the Enclave government cleansed it. Since President Dick Richardson had lifted child-rearing restrictions, the vault's population exploded. Nonetheless, it was a safer place for a child than the wasteland. Thus, Douglas spent most of his youth in the safety of the vault, like most children in the Enclave's vaults. Grant was raised with a fervent hatred of communism. <clears throat> Sadly, 200 years. Of Enclave propaganda living in the, on a vault run under the command economy meant that he and most of the members of the Enclaves were left with a vague understanding of what communism was, and as such, of course. Uh, Granite. Do all enemies of America must be communists? Grant's, Granite's hatred of communism will play a role in future events and is necessary to unlock anti communist propaganda. Uh, yeah. Notice this first contact. When Douglas was 17 years old, the population of the Enclave vault reached the upper limits of its last support systems. As a result, a large portion of the healthy and strong were ordered to leave the safety of the vault. He established contact with a large group of Enclave remnants, led by an old Navarro drill sergeant. Douglas Howard was quick to contact with his father's grand company instead, slipping away from the rest unseen. His father welcomed him back, giving him a position with the company where he quickly rose to the ranks. When Douglas was a lieutenant of the Grand Defense Company, he received uh, an emergency distress signal. So the message sounded desperate and came from NCR Battalion Fighting Raiders, Brother Knights, Kaiser Scouts seeking new lands. So Brother Knights, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Tech. Oh, brother Knight, why not? When Douglas arrived with the team, the situation the defenders had grown more dire. Their battered defense was crumbling quickly under a determined but almost equally bloodied raider gang. Looking over the sad state of both parties, Douglas decided to wipe them out lest they reveal the, survive, the uncle's uh, survival. Help take down the raiders. Who cares, Matic? Connection with this faction. Ooh, I like Ruthless. No, I'm looking cares, Matic, though. Granted, it's Exodus. This isn't new. Granite's company was famous on the West Coast, having conducted operations from Seattle to the Rio, and everywhere in between. When Granite took over, the base of the operations was Arcata, or Cato, the mercenary capital of Northern California. Granite always felt at home there and never knew why. Things had played out differently, he'd still be there, however. In the encroachment of the NCR and the Navarro territories, suspicion was being raised by the Granite Company outfit, and just where did they get the power armor training? But when the signal from the Sierra Army Depot was intercepted thanks to a decoder device sold to them from some crazy caravan merchant, and Granite Company made the trek to Nevada. Before they left, they made sure to salvage many possible weapons. Ooh. Brought families and friends. Yeah, we gotta go with that one. It's going down a little bit. So we gotta stymie that just a little bit, too. Worth their percent. Still not bad. Reform and then purge the opposition. There are many in our midst who do not share a vision for the future. They must be dealt with. Ooh. Remove political infighting. Good. That'll help us out with way more stability, too. A legitimacy tutorial and a lament for a reform. Oh. Purity homes. Home is Nevada, the American dream, huh? I get more political power too, which is also very good. <coughs> Ohm's Law, always very good. I'll admit for reform. Uh, oh boy. The first time in centuries. Uh, our authority has extended, extended beyond core enclave members. Considering our previous interactions with these newfound citizens could easily be misinterpreted as attempted genocide. Proving ourselves a legitimate government will take time and effort. Some choices we will make will increase or decrease our legitimacy. Higher legitimacy comes with a bonus to our rule and allows for new choices in our focus tree. Lower legitimacy will come with penalties, at least until we finally keep the wastelanders loyal, regardless of their opinions. You know, so the negative effects of low legitimacy are currently very weak. The effects of legitimacy become more severe as the population expands beyond the core enclave members. Um, the enclave will tell them what to think. I'll keep that in mind. Could use political power. What about this one? A lament for reform. The reformer faction of the Enclave have never had it easy. For its foremost, many of their better natures often led them to desert the Enclave for the first chance they got, or do whatever they could to resist the terrible actions they were forced to commit. What's more, those remain often had to keep their heads down due to the machinations of President Rick, uh, Richardson. Now, the Supers bit them hard in the end, with many of the reformers banished to the mainland, making up many of their survivors while the hardline leadership went down with the rig. However, both are odds for the future of the Enclave. The younger generation, having grown up outside the insular culture of the rig, have a more open view of the world around them, nurtured, of course, by their parents. However, many are beholden to their parents and unsure of their future given. They were forced to flee their homes for no crime aside from being alive. As Grant addressed the assembly, he could feel the uncertainty within the room. Today, the today is the beginning of a new era, and many of you entrusted to me. Among the series of events in my life, nothing could have filled me with greater anxiety than what you've given me today. On the one hand, I was summoned by my country, I test I barely know, whose voice I could never hear until now. My fellow Americans, I hear you. I am but your humble servant. I'll put down my gaddling laser and take up the oath of the office you good people have all but seen fit to hand me. We shall enter this new world with fire in our eyes and pride in our heart. God bless the Enclave, and if it's 
if it's a peop it's people and it's future. And God bless America. May it never be forgotten. Why do we need so much command power? Is there a reason why we need so much command power? Not political infighting, PRS reformers. What small speech? Release, make arrange disappearances. Those are exercises. That, that's pretty good too. Directing enclave personnel with the military exercise can buy us valuable time to undermine the efforts of our enemies. Additionally, those who oppose us tend to be person, especially prone to unfortunate accidents during these activities. More army XP would be nice, but still. God bless the enclave. Absolutely. And then what? All right, so we're over here. Presidential victory speech. With electoral victory snatched from the jaws of defeat, it's time to speak to our supporters and opponents alike about a vision of the enclave's future. Provoke the purists. Ooh, reach out to centrists. We'll have to compromise. Make compromises. Um, I seem like we're going to a relatively reformist, but not extremely reformist, but relatively reformist. Provoke the purists. We could do this. Many of the devoted purists are on the edge, feeling control of the enclave's destiny slipping between their fingers. They're eager to abandon the words in favor of actions. Too eager, in fact, this could be exploited. Reach out to centrists. There are many among us who still have not chosen sides in this conflict. We could reach out to those centrists and the least radical purists to expand our power base. Was inevitably mean making promises that might compromise our own future or vision of the enclave future. And then you've got to consolidate power. While we're gaining the upper hand, the peers are alive and well. It's time to gather all those who so disagree with their vision in one room so we may address them and the qualms. Many can still be swayed to our side. Traitors in the officer corps. The recent elections have stirred up latest tensions or latent tensions in our officer corps. Many of our most experienced and respected military leadership are Navarro veterans, and there's not a man among them who's not lost a comrade there. It's not surprising that many of them have seemed taken in uh, by Anderson's message of revenge against the NCR and mutes alike. With the government moving in another direction, tensions are high and there are whispers of traitors. We'll have to deal with them later. Unfortunately, we get more elite support. Secrets stolen. Last night, a, late, a small group of traitors made off with a verdict burden almost all of our old military codes. The communication suggests that they were opportunists. We saw a better future in selling the codes than wherever the enclave was headed. Regardless of their intentions, this betrayal is a severe blow. Many old military bases including the heavily fortified levels of the Sierra Armor Depot are now forever lost to us. Good we don't need them. Blame the purists? Sure, why not? Cafeteria incident. A disturbing photograph has been circulating amongst uh, the cafeteria staff, involving one of the staff members intentionally handling, handling ingredients inappropriately. They can show of finding them and punishing the man. There are more matters to attend to. Mm, well, right now, what are we at? Oh, we get... Enough to get quite a bit more, huh? Three mm, percent. Well, let's look, take a look. Oh, we could crack down here. Lose stability in elites. Oh, crackdowns, I guess. Um, because I'd rather do this one. Just, yeah, I don't mind losing uh, this and getting this instead. What a small speech. Um, sure, why not? right now it's barely going up and that's still going up for intellectual so and we're just holding the victory speech um i kind of want to see what this one wants to compromise uh, to promise compromises if not we'll take a oh chaos oh nice up with song i forgot about this oh, look at that free folk ah oh. interesting the raw territories eureka fusong what is fusong well, they have nothing there, so... Okay, why not? Demote? Oh, demote purist officers. While the top brass is still out of reach, we could carefully expand our influence by replacing the more outspoken purists in the lower officer ranks with the more loyal colleagues. Gains demoted. Well, that'd be pretty good to do, actually, as well. Um, do we really want to make compromises? I mean, I'll do it again sometime. We could try it. As we will try to consolidate power. As we are already above 50%, we're going up higher and higher and higher, too. So, um, Trade among our scientists, many of our best and brightest. Once part of the secret projects performed at Navarro in the rig. For this, they were persecuted relentlessly after the fall of Navarro. None of them forgotten this. Few have forgiven him. Since the, since the elections, progress in the project has slowed down, and laboratory equipment has gone missing, and reports of unpatriotic behavior can become common. We'll have to deal with them later. So, are we, still, are we losing any now? No, we're still going up, so it's fine. Also, I did throw in this guy, Daniel Shepard. We, it just hurts our navy, but we don't have a navy, so it doesn't matter. Ouroboros. Demand tribute. Uh, what? Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? Alright, so what do we got here? 
completed, demote him. Honestly, we don't really need to even do that. I want more stability and whatnot, but still. Oh yeah, treacherous, officer corps. And we went to Enclave Academy. Um, what else we got around here? Thomas, construction speed, elite support. Oh, we have no economic advisors right now, fortunately. Civilian economy wouldn't be bad. Or actually going early mobilization might not be bad too. We could go to Fools and Dreamers eventually though. Outside of volunteers, huh? Promotion. Recent commander at position is opened up. There are two available candidates eligible for promotion. An older experienced moral veteran and a younger outspoken former. Promote the man? Van Buren. Uh, promise, promote the loyal man. 100 army speed is a lot. No, oh, he's like a 75 though. Well, we definitely gotta go that way then. Outsider volunteers, popularity, or stability's loss is based on the popularity of elite's faction. Which I don't mind doing, maybe. Depending on what we do. Questions about the NCR, of course. Is next. Um, now we have that unique armor stuff, which kinda sucks. Oh, well, this is colorful. Nice. Do, oh yeah, I guess we do need the uh, Why did I just spend all the arm XP? What the heck is wrong with me? It's been a while since I've actually done this. Oh god. Pierre the Purist has been spreading the rumor. They were looking to compromise with the NCR. Some have even dared suggest we surrender to our old and hated nemesis. Purists, moderates, and even many reformers have absolutely no intention of letting bygones be bygones. Thus, a question is posed during a conference what to do with the NCR? No intentions of compromising with them. You promise to not make peace with the NCR. Dodge question. While we've made much progress in introducing the idea of outsiders as something else in target practice, many are still unsure about our intentions towards the mutants. Rumors have ranged from possible integration of wastelanders and or ranks to ridiculous suggestions of forced intermarriage between pure and unpure humans. It appears that there are many doubtings, purists and moderates, who would be much more ease after the promise of a peaceful but separated existence provided the mutants know who's in charge. So the question is posed, what about the mutants? New, in new integration. What about them? I will not make peace with the NCR. Uh, we'll see you later. I don't know. Yeah. Is that bad for us? Question about the ghouls. Someone raised the question we should integrate ghouls in the Enclave. On the one hand, many of the ghouls we've come across are feral monsters, but it's been pointed out that some of the, them knew pre war America and perversely are more American than many wastelanders. No integration? I don't know. This is going back and bite me in the butt. Well, I'll promise to not integrate the ghouls. We can lower it. Oh, uh, well, not as hate as the NCR. The Brotherhood of Steel played a major role in the destruction of Arl and the loss of many of our comrades, brothers, and sisters, and fathers. It was inevitable that a voice in the room would be raised to ask what we meant to do with the power armor by scouts occupying so many of our military bases using stolen government property. Because we never allied with them. You might promise, promise, I don't want to promise, dodge question. Yeah, the brother could be pitted against the NCR. Doesn't mean we, just because we compromise, it doesn't mean we compromise on everything. Prepare to scientists. Um, oh, easy decision here. Oh, I guess we have to do that anyways, do we? Even more stability though. Organization relations, yeah. So this is still bugged that we have no caps. That makes sense, I guess. Mm. Purge you officers. The time's come to rid ourselves of the most stubborn purest elements within our officer corps. We cannot let such an essential part of the enclave be infested with traitors and saboteurs. Demotions, banishments, or executions, one way or another, our officers will be loyal. Nice. Consolidating power is important, too. Assassinate Dr. Anderson, huh? Glad you got work as needed. Nice. Ask good to do that anyways, because you can. Consolidating power. Potentials have been high since the elections. Peer support for the peers has only intensified as a result, especially in the upper echelons of our government. To address the situation, we have collected all those within our grievances towards the new U.S. government to one room, awaiting answers for the new president. Someone hand me my speech. Fill my fellow Americans. Sure, why not? Another exercise is kind of nice, but still. Good working conditions. Sure. Major General Grimm uh, speaks out in favor of Anderson. 
During a heated argument that officers missed all today, Major General Grimm has spoken loudly out in favor of Franklin Anderson and said he was about the Enclave's future. Future West words were aimed at both the mutants of the NCR and the President, Douglas Granite. Well, the officer in question may be a capable leader in the field, we should note the opinions of the commanders we appoint to lead. What they say in the mess over the radio will always affect their loyal soldiers. Um, these are all ahead of time. I don't like that. It's all ahead of time. All ahead of time. Terrible. Ah. Oh. Here. I'm going to their opinions. But we'll put their name down on the list just separately, just in case. Speaking of the personal, Douglas has always had a way with words. This will be the f first purest hardliner he brought to his side. 40% chance of uh, him. Becomes a reformer. 30% chance of losing 10% intellectual support, which we can afford. Hey, he's placated. Expecting some sort of repository for the greasy comments, General Major Major General Grimm was supposed to be invited to the President's personal bunker suite for dinner instead. After like the conversation over roasted death clown some scotch, it appears that Major General Grimm <clears throat> has relented somewhat in their previous convictions. While Douglas may not have made a staunch reformer out of the commander, it appears that this may be the end of any such outbursts. That ought to do. So be it. So be it. Train. We don't want to get rid of you, but we're just scientists. Time's come to rid of ourselves the most stubborn, purest elements within our d research divisions. We well, you know that's such an essential part of the enclave being fast with traitors and saboteurs, demotions, banishments, or executions. One way or another, our scientists will be loyal. <coughs> Excuse me. Our first citizen, Lynette, wins re election. Good for her. Mm. Army offense is kind of nice. Pair drop attack and defense would be pretty good, too. More defense is good, but. I might just go with partial mobilization. We can't go to war economy. More than 50% war support. Um, I might just go partial mobilization. We'll go down here later, maybe. So anyway, we get more war support immediately. Ah, eventually, actually, we might just want to wait then. Loyal officers. Um, I don't want to do that one. Not yet. Motivated by vengeance? You bet we are. Technocrat, well. D shaky. Well, you know, let's go with the golden gecko. You can never go wrong with a golden gecko. Anderson holds a speech. Spy uh, is near defeat in recent elections. <clears throat> Franklin Anderson has been working tirelessly to rouse his supporters against a new administration, though he carefully chose his words to avoid anything openly treasonous. Uh, most believe that the only real reason he's alive and allowed to speak is that his numerous supporters may be driven out to open revolt otherwise. Make sure it's not broadcast, at least. You're quickly running, running out of friends, An Anderson. You're running out of friends quickly, Anderson. It's fine. Assassinate Dr. Anderson. To assassinate Dr. Anderson will crush opposition towards our tolerant, inclusive enclave. Good, Bertram. So ninety percent. When selected, you lose five percent more stability and fifty manpower. That's not bad. Um, we do three percent intellectuals. We need that lower by five percent. Honestly, we lose three percent stability for it. It's only three percent there. Fifty. That's exactly what we need. And then I heard about purging the opposition, right? So, many in our midst who do not share our vision for the future, they must be dealt with. Home is Nevada. Although the uncle has focused traditionally been on California and restoring the United States, some argue we should focus on securing Nevada and working with Americans across wastes. Some sort of League of American States may be more viable than invading everywhere from New Victoria to the Pecos colonies. Promise broken? Yeah, no thanks. American dream. Let us make our vision clear to all those within our borders. Our aim is to revive the United States of America. We do not intend to make any compromise with the New California Republic or anyone else who stands in the way of our destiny. Promise is kept. The rebuilding nation. Operational security compromise. Oh, whoops. Uh, Mr. President, we have our disturbing uh, reports of the NCR radio chatter uh, and reference to our facilities. We have also received one report of the NCR spy stumbling into one of our conference rooms, completely unaware of where exactly he was. Needless to say, the NCR should have noticed something terribly wrong if we don't act now. Continue to operate as normal may have dire consequences. Time, my time has come. Uh, Radio Jams, false reports as usual. Oh, whoops, I failed it. Cease aggressive tactics. Cease resource extractions. Cease construction numbers. That's fine. Oh, it's not like we have that many cities to work with anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
Rock balloons and gliders? Oh, heck yeah. Let's see over here. Oh, that's good too. Yeah, it's fine. The attempted purge of Franklin Anderson is next. Good. <coughs> the good doctor's bill has been a thorn in our side ever since it was lost in the election. His connections and what's have kept him alive up until now, several leading his few remaining followers. Up until the last minute, Anderson stayed put at his position at the Sierra Armor Depot, fulfilling his administrative duties on his terminal. It was to our great surprise that we found his office empty, as we left it in a great hurry. A bird of bird and small group of personals. Some known to be his followers and some power armor also disappeared around the same time. Anderson's terminal has been wiped clean, but analyzing the past network traffic reveals it was pinging potential enclave outposts in the east using expired presidential uh, authentication codes. Which is our monitoring drop since they automatically failed authentication. Or authentication. This has been rectified, but rest assured our current remaining presidential authentic authentication codes have never been compromised and Anderson will be rejected by any remaining enclave systems. Regards, Anderson is most loyal followers of Ghana, no longer be a problem for the foreseeable future. Clever man, but he knows that he's lost. The Sierra Army Depot. You know, we're born, huh? The new capital. It's kind of cool. Uh, Sierra Armor Depot. She has remained relatively unlooted thanks to its automatic, automated defenses. They should respond to military access codes, leaving us free to access the unspoiled lower levels of the depot to set up our new base of operations. Absolutely. Cool. Um, military exercise. We get 25 army XP here, or we can wait to get this one. I see 25 army XP. There's not bad. Eh. I want more stability too, though. I'll just do a whole military theory committee. There's not much, honestly. It's every day. Point one. If you get 10, you get more here, technically. Um. Hmm. Eh, sure, why not? It's immediate. And we'll move political fighting and fighting, thank God. Forest tier tires, huh? Well, actually, I'm okay with that. Because uh, we get 5% more, uh, more support, which is pretty good. Of course, political infighting is hurting us pretty badly, too. Polarization between two major factions of the Enclave government has come to a boiling point. Power armor expertise. Unlike much of the wasteland, the Enclave can afford to equip a significant number of power armor divisions, however. Can only do so much of its army as a small elite force, should that ever change. Protected by a Sierra Armor Depot. Our headquarters is located in the bunkers underneath the Sierra Armor Depot. If we lose a service area to enemies, we will take them down to break down the vault doors. If the Sierra Armor Depot falls, you have some time to claim it before the game is over. Burns in the Brotherhood. Pretty normal. Canoes, yay, I love canoes. Yay. Extend research shifts, yeah. We're about to get a lot more political power, thank god. Political and fighting good. Hurts our recovery rate too. Not ideal. Assault canoes. Roar. Bicycles. Sure. Concentration force is good too. Modem. Our attack and organization. Research speed. And we purge the opposition into the blizzard. Well, most of the remaining peers were either executed. I had accidents or simply packed up and disappeared while they had still had a chance. One particular numerous group appropriated a few bird birds and headed north far beyond the radar covered. One can only guess why they would choose such a bizarre look direction. They'd probably freeze to death anyways. Enclave defectors flocked to the Legion. Although we took power with a promise to not purge our political enemies, like most politicians, we've fallen short of our promises. Well, some peers fled east of Chicago or Raven Rock. Some Enclave loyalists who, like Wasteland Americans, personally but doubted cause, have sold the services to the Legion. The bastards took some suits of power armored, plasma guns, and a uh, last supply of FAV on the way out. Apparently, Kaiser tends to use them to ring the torture knowledge to the waste in a rather literal fashion. Wait, why did I take the FEV? Anti integration faction. The Pierce are no more, but that does not mean every member of the former faction is an unconditional lover of Wastelanders. Many have the opinion that while there are certainly no Pierce, the Wastelanders should be kept at a safe arm's length from the Pierce stock humans of the Enclave, for them. There can be no integration. Only the ruling of one class by their genetic betters, many ex Pierce and former moderates, have gone over to this new faction in their government. I should approach a new divide. At least it would not be called the Anti Integration Party. This new faction is allowed to absorb remaining purists and moderates and discuss their ideas openly, easing tensions. Two steps forward, one, short, one step back. Please acknowledge this new faction is anything but purists with extra status. Yeah, I'll go that one, I don't care. 
American Dream. Ah, Concentration Force, good. <clears throat> uh, stra scavenging the surface, huh? With the intervening years has left Sierra, DR Sierra Depot, uh, desolate ruin. Now that we the map, I wish you focus on our initial efforts of getting the top in ready condition. Can't be removed from office. Oh, God. Remember the rig. Four decades ago, our base of operations was sabotaged, and many of our old guard lost comrades and family in the ensuing explosion. The act has gone unavenged in the decades since, but we've not forgotten. Better far below. The Great War, earthquakes, and the passage of time did a number on the depot's lowest level. Buried down there are a lot of lost computer banks and storage areas that are vital to our efforts. Oh, look at this. That's pretty good. Receiving the archives. Recovering the archives. Much of our research was lost in Navarro. Poseidon and a resulting exodus. Even our communication protocols had to be reestablished. So let us salvage what we can from the servers and archives of the Sierra Army Depot. Surely some of the information is suitable for our purposes. <clears throat> Excavating the lower levels. Ooh, look at that. Our military codes give us access to parts of the depot that are almost entirely untouched. Let us open the old armory and maintenance storage and salvage what we can. Remember Navarro. Ooh. Our old members clearly remember when the NCR and Brother descended upon Navarro. Cut off from Enclave leadership, they had nonetheless fought bravely. While most of us escaped the slaughter, those that stayed behind to delay our enemies died as American heroes. It's time we remember their sacrifice. Navarro's now a core bus. Sierra Enclave. Oh. God plus the Enclave. Oh, we can't do this one. Oh, that would be really cool if we could. Are we do this, please go ahead. Our flag is still here. The Enclave dream has always been to restore America to its rightful shores. From sea to shining sea, it is what drove the Enclave on through those er dark early years after the Great War. What kept their drive going for over 100 years, and what was the spark that returned them to the shores of California when they began their return? That lie was also thought dead in the past 30 years since the destruction of the rig. With many proud Americans hunted down like rabid dogs, many times shot dead in the streets, but no longer. <coughs> President Granite announced today that the Enclave dream of returning the stars and stripes to the shores of America will begin in earnest. That steps will be taken to infiltrate and lay the groundwork for America's return. All I asked for was time, to, time to be ready, time to prepare, that soon, one day, this new world will see the return of the United States, and that nothing, not even a travel, is going to stop them this time. May our banner forever wave. Over this land of the free. We have enough stability, so let me go, may our banner forever wave. Uh oh. Oh, nice, it just opened up everything else now here. Jesus, love it. I guess we have a lot to do with Rebuilding a Nation. Rebuilding a Nation, Commonwealth Project, Rebuilding a Nation. Broad lane sign, huh? Tanny's legacy. It's just interesting seeing what we're doing here. Ability to use America's curious to incorporate settler and tribal nations in the United States of America. Firm is granite. Teach raiders and tribes of freedom is the sole sovereign right of every American. Santiago Sojour. Defeat the axis of evil. Seeking allies. Do we need allies? I don't think we need allies. What is this one? Restoring Area 51 and Sierra and Nevada test site. Let's get the labs. Oh, the man from Cedar. Adds one spy. <clears throat> Interesting. Department of Defense. Department of Defense reborn. Free war installations. Mexican engineering. Home defense. Wow. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just normal stuff that we've seen before, but some of this is brand new, which is really cool. Danger close. Doctrine, how do we fight? Power projection, first, last, and only line. American juggernaut, Jesus. MacArthur Doctrine, ooh. The Sherman Doctrine, death from above. Replace death from above. The Chase Doctrine, remove freedom forts. Killing fields with chase doctrine. Arsenal of democracy. Power of the old world. Strength of the new world. Oh, good God. Holy crap, there's a lot here. There really is a lot. But I guess Department of Defense. To the rise of the reformers, the Enclave was largely run by the military. Uh, now that we're trying to restore the rule of law, perhaps we should re revive the Department devoted to the military matters. But I think I'll end it there. First good episode of us uh, playing is, uh, you know, the Enclave again. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with the Enclave. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.